Uh, they already take care of him. It's just that quick reaction and a double shot, some collateral. Wow. I say, yeah, don't rush me. Oh, they can't help him, but they actually find a trade when FG Win used three spurs. Oh, Kyo doesn't need specials. Right now, the hordes just have not been there so far in this set. I say that though, Wadsum comes up with one, now going back into the courtyard, is getting zoned away, and Zip on the first bomb. Wadsum with the triple, but such a nice shot from Nox. Oh my god, I want to watch more Noctis from Buster gameplay. Noctis with the triple inkjet. What an absolute pleasure to watch this level of Splatoon. Four knockouts over the course of the seven yeah. games. I, uh, this is level of Splatoon. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the Tassel All-Stars Reveal Show. My name, of course, is Kbot. I assume you all probably know me well, and you know my partner as well for this show. Ninja, how you doing today? Yo, what's up? Uh... Yeah, Kenneth has dra oh, K-Boss dragged me on to uh, do this <laughs> Tassel All-Stars reveal. I just, I've already slipped up. It, it is, it is going to yeah, be a well. I've already slipped up, but either way, <laughs> no, it's not going to be a disaster. We've got a great show ahead uh, of us, and we're going to be revealing, yeah, the All-Star teams. I'm uh, I'm really excited to go through them all, and uh, yeah, I'm going to let K-Bot lead it, because I've already stumbled up nine times. <laughs> what? No, hang on. No, it's only been once. It's only been okay, once, yeah. to be fair. Um, But yeah, so we're doing this thing. Uh, It's finally here. Tassel All-Stars is about on us, of course. This event uh, kind of was one of the last brainchilds, uh, I suppose, of uh, Sendo himself, uh, who kind of put something together. Uh, it should be kind of just like a fun kind of pickup event uh, in all sorts of ways. Gets the public involved as well. So hopefully you all submitted those ballots. We've received 755 uh, correctly filled out ballots. There were, I think... I think there was almost about a hundred or so that had duplicates. And so sometimes oh that's, uh, I know, but uh, I mean, unfortunately, uh, you know, if there was only one duplicate there, I just removed the entire thing. Uh, so you had to follow directions. I'm sorry. Uh, your vote might not count if you didn't follow directions. That's the way the world works, but we still had 755 unique ballots. So thank you all so much for filling that out. Of course, you know, obviously this event wouldn't be nearly as uh, exciting if it wasn't for your, uh, engagement with it as well. So we're excited you're here as well. And we hope that you're really looking forward to the matches. Of course, as you just saw in that trailer, very briefly, uh, the matches will all take place on this coming. Saturday, uh, the 29th of May, at starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, which is what? What is that over there across the pond? Uh, 7 uh, p.m. Uh, Central European, well, I think. 7 p.m. Central European, and then if you're, you know, Portugal, UK, then it'll be 6 p.m. Yeah, right. For for all single Portuguese person that might be watching this one right now. No, 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 um, there's a few. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, I'm just I'm just flaming Dura for the sake of flaming Dura. Um, and who knows? Maybe he made it in All-Stars. Maybe he didn't. We'll have to wait and find out as we have uh, those rosters ahead of us here. Uh, but, you know, before we get into it, we had 44 players uh, that were interested in signing up for this event. Kind of the way it worked is that, you know, we reached out to a lot of individual players uh, on the way through. And, uh, you know, we reached out to them, asked if they were interested in participating in the event. Uh, and so when they responded back, 44 responded back positively, said that they wanted to be involved. And so those were the 44 names that you all saw on those ballots you all got to vote for. And so it uh, should be a lot of fun to see exactly what comes out here. Matt, I know that, uh, you know, you suggested a handful of people uh, off of the list that I started to give you. Uh, so, you know, how do you think this one's going to shake out? Uh, I mean... Well, I know how it's going to shake out, but either way, I think uh, people are going to be really interested and uh, excited by a lot of these results. Like, I, I, I don't know. I was um, I was kind of caught off guard by the placement of some players in the listing. I don't want to, you know, be too specific yet. We want to let, you know, people see it for themselves. But I was pretty caught off guard by people ended up uh, going in some places. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see exactly what that all looks like here. Um... And, you know, should be a good one. Um, honestly, you want to hop into it? I don't know. Yeah, Might as well. Go. I think I, we're going to... All right. We'll go ahead and start with the first teams for each region. These were the most popular players uh, in both NA and EU. Starting with North, the North American first team, we have in the aggro slots, Kyo. 
surprise. Big shock there. And Bagel. In support, yeah, we have Bursty. And in the anchor position, we have Ice. And then on the European side of things, of course, in the aggro slots, we have Kiver and Noctis. In support, we have Obito. And in the anchor role, we have Brian. So that is the first team battle. Those two teams will be facing it off uh, for their region's pride. Uh, sorry, Matt, I kind of rolled over you there. Uh, no, but I, what are I, your I, thoughts here? I mean, I feel like you have, uh, you know, Kyo's a big, big, big surprise. I, I, at first, I would say I'm surprised about um, Ice being more popular than Biscuit on the voting, simply because, you know, Biscuit has FT win. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is the uh, the two players per team rule coming in. People that don't know, you can't have more than two players on any established team, right? So then we can't just have first team NA, FT win. That would, uh, you know, be a bit too <laughs> ridiculous. But so when I say that, Every single member on uh, First Team NA has been on FT Win at some point. This is true. Uh, and that's one of the things, you know, that's kind of interesting about this lineup is that uh, it's always like an FT Win All-Stars edition here. Yeah. Uh, of course, Bagel played with them a little bit in Tassel uh, Season 2 last fall. Uh, and then, you know, Ice was uh, one of the primary founding members of FT Win way back in the day. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun, I think, to see this combination of players uh, going up against one another. But surprisingly, I only had to invoke that roster rule one time, and it was actually on the European side, uh, where there were three members of Radiance in the first team uh, EU here. So, so this uh, was just the most popular NA lineup, is what you're telling me. This was the most popular NA lineup. Wow. This is exactly how it goes. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's kind of you know fun and interesting to see out. You all made me have a lot less work. Uh, I was expecting to see like four <laughs> NA people, uh, and it turns out that that just wasn't the case. So um, yeah, that should be uh, a good one here. But in order to dive a little bit deeper into uh, these uh, rosters, uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring in one of the players that's gonna be participating uh, in this lineup. Uh, I just want to make sure that he is all good to go. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and bring in Kiver. Go ahead and drag him in now. Uh, Kiver, welcome aboard and congratulations on making the first team in Europe. Hello, hey guys. Hey, so uh, I want to give you a really brief, uh, perhaps interesting tidbit. Um, and this is kind of unfair because there were two aggro slots, obviously, or uh, there were double the aggro slots, but uh, you were the most voted player out of anyone. You collected the most points out of anyone in uh, voting overall. Uh, so, you know, kind of in the context of that, how does that uh, kind of recognition uh, feel in terms of that public support? Mm, I feel pretty good about it. Like, from people who support me from my stream, from my YouTube videos, Everybody who has been following me since Morocco or Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, STDX, Broken Paradise, they are radiant. Like, I feel, I feel very happy about it. My guy, like, like I, I just see a lot of support for me and it makes me very happy. Yeah, uh, that's awesome to see. You know, as you mentioned, I think you've been around the entire time, right? You were on Koopa <laughs> Clan yeah. way back yeah. in the day, um, starting things off. And, you know, now you're obviously uh, still playing Splatoon competitively. I mean, what keeps you going? Um, competition, always having rivals, I would say. That would drive me up, honestly. Like from, from the game, I, I love competition, like in even in sports, because back then I was, I was, doing, I was playing in soccer and clubs for years, but now, yeah, with video games, like just competition in general is what drives me, I would say. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Matt, uh, do you have anything? Yeah, I was going to say, so uh, obviously you got to bring over a Beto with you to your first team at Neo. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if this is a bit too cheeky to ask and you'd rather not say, but is there is that the Radiance member you would have wanted to come with you on first team at EU? <laughs> or do you think you would have had a better yeah. pairing to take on then, eh? Mmm... That's 
Uh, that's a complicated question, but uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a good synergy with Obito in general. Yeah. My synergy may be better with Gray because Rapid and Splash together. But yeah, I, I think we play very good with Obito. Like we know each other for years. We know how we play. Like just everything we we just know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, can I go? Also, or, go, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say also talking about the reunions on first team NA with uh, all of them being FGM members. Of course, I just realized it's gonna be Kieran and Brian uh, first time play. Uh, well, getting back together properly since uh, Creme Fresh, I guess. Like, yeah. you guys played on Creme Fresh way back in the day. So that'd be really fun to see, actually. Now I've only just processed that. <laughs> nah, I didn't even together. think about that. Yeah. What was that? We still play together with Brian. Like we play like uh, pretty often together, or we just talk talk about strats or just in general. We still friends. Like even if we are not on the same team, we still talk about strategies and just aspects of the game. So. Yeah, I mean the game's a fun one to bond yeah. over with anyone. I mean. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I, I'm kind of curious to get your take on this. Out of everyone in the match, outside of you, who do you think is going to be like the standout performer? Uh, and this is probably going to be like mm -hmm. a really good one. Like try to predict who the MVP is going to be. Wow, I was thinking about it, and honestly, I I can't think of anybody because we have eight players. They can clutch, they can be MVP, they play super well. Myself, Kyo, Bursty, Brian, Obito, Ice, Bagel, and Noctis, we all can do crazy plays. So yeah, I don't really know who can be <laughs> the MVP of the game. Did I even want to take a stab? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Damn, okay. I was expecting it to just be uh, a Beto, you know, you go for the safe choice, pick your teammate, but uh, I respect the I, I, I no, respect I the nobody know. choice. I mean, it's got to be a stacked lobby. It's the first team against the first team, so yeah, it's understandable. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess like, so on the other side, for reference, uh, the most voted person in NA was Kyo, perhaps no surprise there. Uh, obviously, I mean, You've had to have played against Kyo uh, at FT Win like hundreds of times at this mm. point. Uh, <laughs> how, how does how do you kind of approach that matchup? Like, how, how do you expect that one's really gonna go? Um, I like keeping secrets, but we are working on it right now. Like we, so you we got strats for, Yeah, we are also working on strats since since with Brian, since we played together, we talked about strats compared to most of the teammates, for example. Are yeah. we allowed to talk about the maps yet, uh, K-Bot, or are we saving that for later? Um, I, we can talk about it briefly, uh, yeah, if you want. Yeah, because, you know, talking about the strats, I was just so interested when K-Bot told me the only clan blitz map was picked by Noctis, and it was Camp <laughs> Triggerfish. So, <laughs> and the fact that Noctis was pressured by you guys to pick, like, Camp Triggerfish clams, I, I'm going to be very interested to see what is going to be going on there. I thought it was going to be Sendu picking that map if anyone, so I'm just mm. interested at this point. I'm really excited to see this play out. Uh, how about that? Uh, we just wanted, we, we picked like four zones, no, three zones, six spread zone maps. Yeah. Yeah. And at some point we were like, nah, we gotta pick something out just in case, just in case for a surprise, like a last yeah. each effort, basically. So we just we just look at Clambit maps since we don't really want to play Tower Control and Omicro against against FT Win basically FT Win and Bigo. So yeah, we yeah. we were thinking about Clambit. We look at every map and we're like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> we we had we had the choice between I don't know there was Reef, most of us now out of out of the choice, and in the end we just came to camp. I'm surprised Noctis didn't want to go for like Sturgeon or something. They're <laughs> playing Flash Blaster. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, they're, they're pretty avoiding Sturgeon, so Noctis doesn't touch Flash. That's probably the actual <laughs> uh, route that I'm I, I think he wanted to play on Sturgeon. I remember Mako. He wanted to play on Mako as well. And Sturgeon. No, he, did, he didn't want. Actually, yeah, he didn't want to play on Sturgeon. All right, well. I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see exactly how that plays out. Uh, Kiver, do you have any kind of like closing words, closing thoughts for the fans uh, before we send you off? Well, I simply want to thank you. Thank you all for supporting me. Like, even, even people who are against me, like, hello, Kyo. 
<laughs> uh, this team. <laughs> but yeah, like really, thank you so much for the support, supporting me, and I will do my best and make sure that he wins this match. Like he's very important because I I always wanted to play such a match. So yeah, this is the perfect occasion. Yeah, should be an awesome one, of course. Uh, we are going in reverse order of how the matches will be played. So uh, this is going to be the closing match uh, of the day on Saturday, but uh, should certainly be a banger of a match. Uh, so much star-studded power between those two squads. But Kiver, thank you so much again. Everyone, Kiver, your uh, highest voted player in all of Tassel All-Stars this time around. Kiver, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Thank you too, guys. All right, so uh, Matt, any other kind of reactions there uh, on that lineup I mean, on the whole? I, I think they're pretty expected to be some uh, top voted players. As you said yourself, uh, one of the uh, other Radiance players was, would have been on that team if you're doing your pure voting, but uh, that clause came to fight. But either way, I think having you know those seven to eight players that were first voted, it makes a lot of sense. Again, I'm actually surprised at uh, Ace making it into the first position. Not out skill-wise, I think, you know, brilliant brilliant player there was a whole debate like a month ago uh, about who the best anchor in the west is but you know clearly a brilliant brilliant player i just thought the biscuit would be more popular due to you know fu's popularity but no, i think it's great to see i'd love to see ice play with this roster actually so i'm uh i'm kind of uh, pleasantly surprised i'd say yeah yeah i think that's what it could be one of the more interesting things for me right is that you know bagel has been kind of known to do a little bit of flexing lately um mm -hmm. and so i'm wondering if we're going to see something like uh, like bagel over the blob ice over the bamboo um, I think has been kind of popular in some cases lately, especially when you're kind of running more of a double back sort of a thing. Um, so uh, oh. it could be interesting. Um, I, I should also clarify that all of the players were able to kind of change their roles. Uh, I, you know, notified them multiple times of their role. Uh, and so they were the ones that also uh, picked their own uh, role to kind of delineate their play. Um, I kind of put Bagel in the aggro category because he's been known to play a couple of other weapons and kind of flex around a little bit more to mini, not just necessarily the Nautilus, right? Um, so while he might fill a little bit more of that longer range role, uh, you know, he has the ability to go over these summer thing, other things that could opt for a lot more versatility uh, in that North American lineup. Whereas I feel like we know what we're going to expect almost out of yeah. uh, the European lineup, right? It's going to be a Neo Splash. Definitely. It's going to be a Kenta Machine, probably. Obi's going to be playing the H3D, and Brian most likely is going to be on the Explosher a lot of the time. So uh, it should be really interesting uh, to see exactly how that one plays out. I'm actually interested in what Brian plays, because I wouldn't be surprised if uh, kind of the two Radiance members try and get him to play a bit more Charger than usual to try and emulate a Radiance feel, maybe a bit of Bamboozler, because uh, then you could kind of emulate uh, a bit of a knockoff Radiance, because, uh, you know, Rapid and then the Machine, and I mean, why can't Noctis play Rapid? So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a very Radiance-esque team. They really could actually draw that out if they want to, but uh, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited to see these teams. Yeah, it should certainly be uh, a really good match uh, to close out that day. Uh, but of course, there are going to be two matches before it. And we're going to go ahead and hop right on into the second team reveals for North America and Europe. Uh, and so, you know, we'll see exactly what comes out of this one here as well. You might know a handful of these players, seeing as how they might not have shown up in the first team. We'll just have to wait and see. On the North American side, uh, in the aggro positions, we have Shaq from FT Win and Chara from Climb. In the support role, we have Ant. And in that anchor position, of course, is Biscuit. Yep. On the European side of things, the uh, two aggro positions are filled by Gray and Volti uh, with Sendo as the support or utility pick and Hypnos in that anchor position. So that's going to be our second match of the day, the middle match uh, between these two. When uh, certainly, you know, the rest of the FT win members, uh, the rest of the Radiance members as well uh, coming into this one. Uh, Matt, what are your first thoughts? Now, I, I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm interested by this match because I would say the other one's good. You know, it's exciting. It's got all the star power. It's the first team of its first team. That's why it's exciting. This one, I have no clue what to expect, uh, especially from that second EU team. I feel like they have so much chaos going on there that I don't want to predict anything. I just want to wait until <laughs> we see the match. I know, I'm actually happy I'm not casting that one because I can just sit down and enjoy the chaos and watch it all unfold. <laughs> um, the second NA team, however, I just want to say, 
I think that could be an insane lineup if they have the right guidance, because um, they could honestly play such a not a similar, but they could play play close to FD win style. And I feel like Shaq is just such a great leader, uh, you know, such a important piece to FD win and always has been. I feel like. If he's able to, you know, if they're going to, you know, really, really try hard this, and if uh, the rest of the team really cooperates and follows his leadership, the second team NA could be insane, insane. But uh, we'll just have to see what sort of chaos the Volti's going to spew up in the cauldron to try and uh, dismantle that. I mean, yeah, I, I think this one's certainly going to be a uh, really interesting one to watch overall. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it really should be a good one. You know, as you mentioned, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, especially on the North American side of things. Uh, and so in order to do that, uh, we'll leave, we're, I'm gonna double check here. We're gonna go ahead and bring in Shara, uh, the new content creator uh, himself. He's gonna be playing in this match. Shara, how are you doing this evening? I am doing amazing. How are you guys? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, I'm great. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, are your, what are your initial thoughts here? Uh, on your roster and, of course, on your opponent's roster? Uh, I'm honestly really comfortable with our roster. Shaq is probably the front line I wanted to team with the most. I just think he's one of the smartest fronts out there. He's one of the first players to start using K-Shot more supportively over T-Tech. I think it's absolutely someone who's going to be a great way to lead the team. And I haven't teamed with since Neptune. It's been almost three years, but from what I remember, we were pretty well together. And, of course, I've teamed with Biscuit on Bofa quite a lot recently. So I think it's a great amount of players that I can synergize with and gives a lot of opportunity for us to come up with a game plan. So very confident about our lineup. Ant was uh, on Neptune? Yep, he was on Neptune. <laughs> really? Come on, Man. come on. Oh my God. Okay. You don't no, know your okay. Splatoon history. <laughs> In my defense, most of the time I only interact with one person on each team. Uh, and <laughs> you all know that Ant is an enigma. Like you can never really track that guy down. Right, he's just gonna go do his own thing and he's gonna just have a good time. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, if we talk about that history component, back when Neptune was a thing, Chara, you had a little rivalry with Shaq, huh? Uh, oh, about that yeah. time. Uh, and do. now you're about to team together for this uh, larger event. Yeah, I mean, definitely Neptune and Psyche went back and forth quite a lot in the past there, but definitely is something to be nice to team with them. I think it'll be very interesting for us, so. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, should be a good one. Uh, I think the other thing that I just thought about uh, to get your reactions about, uh, of course, you've been playing a lot more Kenzo Rapid lately. Uh, mm -hmm. I imagine Gray is going to be picking the Kenzo Rapid a couple times. Uh, have you really had that, like, kind of, you know, mono a mono uh, Crapid fight? Like, how does that exactly play out? I mean, I've played against Gray's Rapid a lot of times because he's just one of the most, like, top level rapids out there that i get to play against i think i've played against this rapid more than anyone else honestly so i feel pretty comfortable with it it's definitely going to be interesting to see him playing without uh radiance because a lot of the times my focus is not always on gray when i'm fighting radiance so this time though i think there'll be a lot more actual rapid dittos that have to happen with how the comps might play out but should lead to a lot more interesting gameplay but I'm always up for the ditto. I, I lo actually really like crap of dittos. I like Brello dittos when I play the weapon. So I'm a ditto is one of my favorite things to see. I'm totally up to play against another rapid. I'm sure, we'll see plenty of that. Matt, uh, I know you were talking a little bit about the potential chaos yeah. that could come out of this match. I mean, not the chaos from uh, kind of the NA team, because I feel like in my mind, I can see how this NA team plays. You know, you have uh, Ant and Shaq. I feel like I can see their roles pretty clearly. Uh, you know, Chara, most likely going to be playing the Raptors, been saying. Maybe we'll see some surprise picks. Biscuit, if she's not playing Nort, then what's going to be playing? Um, but the second EU team, I feel like they have a lot of versatility. And again, like I said earlier, they could bring up a lot of chaos with Volti on that carbon. So I feel like that's what you want as a carbon roller. If the game is going, you know, streamed line and coordinated and, you know, very nice and formal and you're a carbon roller player, then things aren't going well for you. Uh, so I feel like Volti's probably going to be trying to be a bit of a nuisance. I'm just going to be interested what the second EU team do about supporting Volti and whether they're going to put Grey on what he's been playing with Radiance, the Rapid, or Grey's been known to be a support player. What if Grey goes to the support? What if Sen is on 10? What if, you know, there, there's so many combinations for the second EU team. I'm just uh, interested how, you know, you guys have been thinking about that, considering the amount of things the second EU team could pull out. Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing, I kind of expect Hypnos to be either the Bamboo or the Sea Jet. I'm 
so I, like, expect that. Obviously, Volti's just going to be the chaotic carve and roller of the match, but I think definitely either Gray or Sendu is going to be on that support, and that means we're either seeing a rapid or a tent, so I've had a lot of time to think about comps. I think we'll be able to have one versatile enough to cover whatever combination of weapons they want to have out here, but I'd say this team definitely does have a lot of options in terms of how they want to play, so a lot of adaptability, but I think we'll be able to just... Whatever they do, I think we can do better. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I like it. I think we'll be able like to do that whatever they throw at us. The interesting thing that you already know that they throw at you, of course, for those of you that are joining us, these matches taking place on Saturday and the players have each individually picked their maps already. Uh, and so that information has been made available to the teams and players. We've been kind of hinting at some of that stuff over the course of the day. And I want to do that again here. Uh, this EU team actually picked three Rainmaker matches uh, to go into you guys. Is that like that has to be a little bit more of a shock to you, right? I mean, how do you expect that to kind of play out, and what do you think they're thinking with that? Honestly, I'm not surprised whatsoever. I expected them to pick three or four Rainmaker matches because it just makes sense for their comp. Volti wants to play fast. Hypnos can play Siege at, and we don't have that traditional backline. We can't run a raid to counter it. But I don't know. I think a, playing a fast-paced mode against a team without a backline might not have been the best game plan. But we'll have to see <laughs> what we can pull out here. But I, I am not surprised at all by the Rainmaker, but I'm not too worried about it either, so. Pretty interesting I'm, I'm not gonna lie, right? Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. I'm not gonna lie, I, uh, I didn't know about that Rainmaker situation, and I'm, I mean, I'm confused. It makes sense when you look at the EU team, but I feel like you would want to pick it against, like, primarily a Nort, because there's been, uh, I remember, like, maybe it was a couple of weeks, but, you know, there's always Twitter discussions. I saw a Twitter discussion, uh, I think, revolving, you know, Fuzzy and Biscuit were talking about just how good Nort actually is in, like, Tower Control Rainmaker. Uh, specifically yeah. those kind of modes and i feel like playing rainmaker against you guys just feels really hard o on paper i feel like i wouldn't want to play rainmaker as this eu team against an a team i mean they're their own team i'm sure they've thought about this i'm sure they have their own strategies i'm just uh i, I guess i didn't expect it really coming out from this lineup against you guys yeah i mean i think not is like i think not is arguably the best weapon in the game in tower and rainmaker it's absolutely top three there's no argument so Taking a nod to TCR Rainmaker, 100% fine by me. I'm completely willing yeah. to have Biscuit play two of his best modes. That's perfectly fine <laughs> with me, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the game plan there is to have custom jet in some way, because the ray is the big thing we don't have, but I'm not, I think it's completely fine with us just because Biscuit playing with our comp, like a backline less comp with a Nautilus is going to be able to thrive really well in Rainmaker as well, so... As much as the comp is good for them, it is just as good for our comp as well. So they'll have to learn how to deal with that, I'm sure. Yeah, of course, we'll have to wait and see how the match plays out on Saturday. It'll be the second match of the day. But Chara, do you have any other kind of words for the fans before we send you off? Um. Well, thanks for voting me on for everyone who managed to vote me here. I know I'm not a traditionally a frontline player, but... You know, I figured it'd be better than having no armor on a team comp if I wanted support, but I uh, appreciate the votes. I hope you guys are looking forward to us playing for the day, and I am unbelievably looking forward to this set and showing off what this roster is capable of. Yeah, it should be a great time. Chara, thank you so much for joining us and giving us a little bit of insight into that North American roster. No problem. Look. Thank you. All right, so... Second team battle down. Uh, those are the rosters there. As you mentioned, European side got a lot of flexibility. Must have a game plan if they're picking all Rainmaker. Because yeah. that is... Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I just don't get it. I I, I wouldn't want to pick Rainmaker. <laughs> I, I I just I just would not want to pick Rainmaker if I saw that matchup. Like I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be out with it. I mean, obviously, I, I'm not doubting these players. They know what they're doing more than me. Uh, I'm just. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to be interested for the Rainmaker matches then to see why they wanted to pick that mode three times out of four. Uh, we'll just have to see. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, <laughs> again, that's something that even I was looking at this thing like, okay, you know, they're all going to pick Splats yeah, on Tower like, Control. Maybe there'll I, be I a Rainmaker like... here or there. Uh, but no, I mean, this match, you know, uh -huh. they, they were picking a lot of Rainmaker. You're going to see a lot more of that variety. Uh, and hopefully, perhaps a lot more of that volatility, right? And that's something that I think the Carbon kind of brings into things, right? Is that uh, with that Carbon has that kind of potential to do a lot. So uh, we'll see what kind of work that Volti can put in there. 
uh, for the EU. I, I always like talking about the carbons. I mean, you know, the carbon, the carbons, just such so much fun to watch. Uh, and it, it is oftentimes pivotal in a lot of these matches, especially when it, uh, you know, has some of those situations where it really capitalizes on uh, some of those positioning misplays. So should be a good one to watch. I will say that uh, for the players, at least, carbon is definitely a weapon that like when i'm outside of the lobby but as soon as i'm in the lobby i hate the weapon so uh, <laughs> and i can imagine that's what the carbon player wants if if if, uh, if any of the people on the na team are fine with carbon uh you know after the set then they definitely lost so uh, he's definitely lost so yeah we'll have to see we'll have to see just how much that can happen of course it's all going to be about enabling that uh, as one of the tools here uh, to their success overall and of course we barely even got to talk about uh you know the supports even in this one right ant could even go over to something like the foil squeezer still paints quite a bit has those bubbles as well to try to shut things down sendo on the other hand has flexibility uh has been playing a lot more zap lately i think in scrims sure. on bed um so you know we're, we could eat still or I assume we're likely to see a zap between Gray and Sendo uh, in some form or fashion there, but uh, should certainly be a good one. A lot to pay attention to and a lot to unpack. And of course, we'll have all day on Saturday to do just that. But we've got one final roster to reveal the third teams, the players that just squeaked in underneath voting. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and hop right into it. On the North American side, in the aggro slots is the Starburst frontline duo of Bran and Jared. In the support role is WLR's Domo. And on the back line is Power. On the other side of the maps, in the EU side, of course, the frontline duo will be held down by Wadsum and Nylon. In the support position will be Terra. And Kaji will be their anchor. So uh, this one's, all, I mean, all these matches yeah. are just so exciting. <laughs> um, you know, you see a lot. There's a lot to really unpack here. Uh, a lot yeah. of people also, you know, veterans that haven't really been playing at the competitive level lately. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about Power, Kaji, Watson even uh, in this match. Uh, certainly should be a fun one to watch uh, no matter how it turns out. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I think the third, sorry, third, oh, obviously third, but I think the NA team here is, I I'm expecting them to be holding nothing but forwards. Uh, you have Bran and Jared, <laughs> definitely quite an aggressive frontline duo, and then you have Domo, by far the most aggressive support player in the West. Like, Domo is the one player where I'll be playing with or against Domo, and he'll just be feeding off, and I think he's feeding his brains out, but then he just doesn't die, and he does so much, and I'm like, okay. Uh, power, you know, always known for being an aggressive charger. The EU team, you know, you've got three UK players, so it's the best team. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are three UK oh, players right. on that roster, so it's the best team, and they're going to win everything. Well, you know, uh, they can't really win everything. They're only winning the one match that they're playing against the North American side. I mean, you know, they can win that, I suppose. It's not like they're going to go on to, to win the whole thing. I'm sorry. They are still going to be the third team uh in the lineup so uh but you know uk rep representative there uh i'm sure i, I think I, I wait a minute did i miss, did i put both you and toby in me this toby. match as well I don't oh know, she my did, god i didn't even me do that toby. intentionally <laughs> me and toby oh. are in the uk match uh which yeah i think you might have made a mistake there because that's not gonna be fun for <laughs> that, anyone watching that's not gonna be biased at all okay. whatsoever another genuine thing though is the EU team is going to have some wacky stuff going on with like double bucket right there because Nylon and Watson are both bucket players. They play bucket. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be definitely some a bit wild stuff going on. And I think it was FLC that described Power vs. Kaji as a boomer bowl because they've both <laughs> not been playing for so long. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. Shout out to FLC uh, for that one. Yeah. I mean, you know, to talk, I think, a little bit more about uh, those, uh, you know, you mentioned Double Slosher. Um, we can talk about that. We can also talk about the fact that he is UK and you all can, I don't know, what, is it tea time? Are we past tea time now? Tea I guess it's well past tea time, isn't it's it? It's like half nine. I've not actually had my tea that, so actually no. <laughs> oh, by tea, I mean dinner, but yeah, I've not had my tea it's not been tea time. All right. Well, nonetheless, we're going to bring in Nylon here. Nylon, thanks for joining us. Uh, what are your overall reactions here uh, to the rosters that you see? Um, I was very shocked that Jared, he didn't get into Team 2. I'm surprised he was 
ranked so low. Same with Bran. The Gustavo is arguably the second best team in the West. So them being in Team 3 was quite a shock to me. Um, I'm surprised about Power getting in. I kind of assume... <laughs> considering he's always saying that he yeah. doesn't want to play the game and he refuses to. So <laughs> I was very shocked that he got in. And the fact that he's actually able to play, so... That's a good thing. Um, in terms of my team, I think Emma Watson is going to be great. You know, uh, European. He was a former European champion. I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, his try is really good. You know, I'll probably have to do something like the usual guys used to do with him and Ochiru. Uh, Kaji, I've never played with a high level splatting before. And obviously, Kaji being with, you know, as good as, as a player that she was. It's going to be great to play with her. And obviously, Tav, you know, he's going to bring that JP style in. And I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> of course. Mm. I mean, I think something that I love about this team, just kind of thinking about it now, you kind of have a uh, Kaji, which was, you know, considered for, I'd say, you know, after the dude era, you have Kaji known as like the best UK player. And now I'd say out of UK players that play in the West, you'd probably be like currently the you know the highest rated doing most uk player so you kind of have the the two different eras of best uk player on the same team and then terra who's has probably the most results out of the uk because uh you know he's always playing with a very high level team so you've kind of got just like yeah. a bunch of top uk players just slammed together mm. on tour almost somebody grab them. the union jacks all right let me see the union <laughs> <Okay>. jack <laughs> look Move around just, just we like get it. it all right a lot of eras together i like it <laughs> yeah i think i think it's great i think it's great yeah, I mean, it'll be great for you. It'll be even greater on the cast. Uh, uh, you know, of course, this is our warm-up match of the day. It'll be the first one to start us off at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, and understandably so, uh, this is more so what I was expecting. The match has, like, what is this? Five Splat Zones maps right in a row. It was about to be six if I didn't let Power change his map. Uh... Uh, you you all just want to play Splat Zones? Like, what is this? An in the zone to you or something? Oh, okay, but you know what map I picked, and you can what which map I actually picked. Yeah, I can weird. actually. Wait, let me flame you on this one. Rainmaker on Kelp Dome? Are you what? serious? <laughs> what is this? Platoon one? <laughs> Was that the deal? Okay, did you pick that off meaning, or did you pick it because you have a splatling on Kelp Dome? Because you have a splatling on Kelp Dome. I remember when okay. um, when, remember when Olive beat Gigi Boys at Platinum Cup, and then Gigi put like. I TC. Well, I don't really like TC that much, but I, so I just went Rainmaker. So, because okay. Power's not going to be able to do anything. So, uh, that's fine. I mean, I, I wanna... like... That's like no, the worst I, I like game. The... That's the map no, that I everyone like forgets about because it's so I, bad. Like, there's the level I like, of, like you hate the map because it's bad and like it, it's not unbalanced, and then there's a level of you forget about it because it's so bad. Yeah, you forget but... that that one's in the game. Look, Kelp is such a it's such a difficult map. It's such an iconic map, though, so I had to pick it. Yeah, I guess that's iconic. We should. Be I don't want to do splat zones. That's boring. <laughs> well, you're gonna that anyway. Because I was gonna pick TC Shadowdor, so, and that's quite boring to be fair. <laughs> oh, you should have done that. <laughs> no, nah, honestly, though, I, I I love bad maps being able to be picked in tournaments. As, as dumb as that sounds, literally just exactly. because like normally. Bad maps are bad because they're like so different, but that lets you do different things. Like, you know, Kelp Dome is genuinely a viable thing when you've got Kaji on your team because you want to open up things to your Splatling. Uh, how many good Splatling maps are there that people like playing on? None. Probably one of the reasons exactly. why people pick Charger is just all the popular maps are just good Charger maps. It's, it's ridiculous. Exactly. Let bad maps play. Get, let, let bad maps get played. I'm actually interested though, Nylon. Um, about how you're going to feel playing against Domo, of course, your current teammate. Uh, and I feel like you called Hold of Rage, let's be honest, we all know you're flaming each other all the time. So, uh, yeah, how's it going to be playing against Domo? Well, obviously, because I'm going to be playing with such mature players, Terra, Kaji, and Watson, they're going to be able to, you know, calm me, and I'll be able to be in quite, I don't know, zen environment. So I won't be able to rage. I'm not going to be raging at all. But Domo, on the other hand, you know, he's going to be with Jared. Him and Jared used to be on Destiny Bond. So the synergy is already there. And I've seen them in VC together. And, you know, it's not going to be as as comforting as it will in our VC. Because <laughs> Watson is a very nice voice. So yeah. I'm going to be instantly calm whenever he calls up, when he calls out, you know. So Do playing against Domo, I already know what he's going to do. So... 
it's not a problem for me. And then whenever I do kill him, he's gonna get mad because I killed him. So. Wait, wait, wait. So, so in, in his, in your words, what is he gonna do? Uh, he's not gonna like it, but for the sake of his team, he's going to bottle. It. He's gonna bottle it in and suck it up, basically, because I know he doesn't like losing one v ones to me. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, your game plan is to make uh, Domo tilt and the rest of the team tilt around him. Yeah, basically. Like, Jared will get annoyed because Domo, like, might get annoyed. But to be fair, Domo is usually quite... He's really... We're all really calm in tournaments, to be fair. Like, the entire team's right. always calm in tournaments, so... I'm pretty sure it'll be, be the same thing, but... Who knows? It'd be funny, though. I guess, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, going back to, you know, you picking Rainmaker Kelp Dome. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you were the eighth map choice. Uh, those, the order of the players, you know, we'll describe this maybe in a bit, but the order of the players uh, was based around voting numbers on the whole. Um, and so, uh, unfortunately, you were the last map pick. The question is, will the series get to eight games? Uh, you know, in order for us to see that Raymaker Kelp, or are we just going to have to ignore it altogether? Um, you never know. You never know, Cable. And you really don't. Honestly, because you, you've said that I basically scraped the votings to get in here, I'm going to make sure that we get to game eight <laughs> just for this, okay? <laughs> you know I mean, hey, I'm here for it. That's more Splatoon for me, okay? Like, don't, don't, don't release the votings. Don't release the votings, because I don't want to, to know that um, I, I almost didn't get in, so... I want to know that, so... Is, is this going to be no, a collage where it's like, Nylon's voting results, uh, Nylon's KDing Tassel, and You're going too far, you're going too far, you're going too far there. You didn't have to do it to him like that. Oh my god. Dude, we, we, we're past that era now, okay? <laughs> okay, we're past that, we're past, we're past that. phase, we're past no, that. You're going to okay? get the highest KD, you're going to get the highest KD in Tassel All-Stars though to make up for it. It's alright, I hey. believe. I'll, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Yeah, you know. I believe. I'm just going to do what the team wants me to do. And that's all I need to do. Whether I get the most kills, yep. whether I don't get any kills, as long as we win, that's fine. I've done my part. That's a team player right there, everyone. Exactly. Round of applause for a team player, uh, Nylon, uh, who unfortunately will be playing against his normal teammate uh, in this match coming up. Nylon, uh, before we send you off, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, do you have any other words out there for the fans um obviously make sure to follow me on all socials and leave me alone leave me alone i had this, you went from kiva to chara and then me no one knows who i am so leave me alone okay fair enough fair enough yeah exactly exactly i've got some stuff coming up soon I promise. Maybe I won't, but it depends uh, if I get to it or not. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, it was great to hear from you a little bit. Uh, are you are you all going to say, like, God save the queen or something? Okay. Okay. It's a bit stereotypical now. So. No, no, you you want to take this one. You want to take this one. No, I'm not saying God save the queen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Nylon, take care. Have a good one. And of course, we'll see you play on Saturday. All right, see ya. Bye. All right, Matt. All right. <laughs> that was our third team. The interesting thing here is that um, before I had removed a lot of the kind of, you know, the throwaway votes, uh, unfortunately, um, there was a lot of very close races to get into this third team uh you know a, a lot of the other players like you all might uh, be surprised zero didn't quite make it uh it got beat yeah. out there at the very end uh falco des with the support of the french community was so close to making it in as well um you know there were a lot of players that were really vying for those last couple of spots especially on the aggro side of things and so uh you know unfortunately we can't run like five matches in one day uh, um you know i i'd love to just get all these players the spotlight but unfortunately uh you know we only have so much time but uh yeah i mean a lot of uh really competition went into uh making these rosters what it is and it certainly is going to be interesting to watch 
Yeah, I think um, I'd say the the uh, ob obviously I'm really pleased with all these lineups. I'm really excited for all of these matches. But I'd say the one thing that I'm kind of slightly disappointed by is that none of kind of uh, what I'd call the up and coming players has made it. In, if you know what I mean, like uh, there are a couple of players that uh, slipped into the voting polls, such as. I can't think of any of the NA ones, but that was, you know, Atomic, Chano, Sakali that I'd say that don't quite have the that top level recognition that I think would have been really exciting to see. Uh, at least one of them in the All-Stars match. But, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, kind of stacked high level talent you're against. So uh, it makes sense that it's going to be hard to uh, kind of make it into the voting and show themselves. But uh, that, that's a shame. I would have loved to see uh, any of those upcoming players uh, come and prove themselves. But either way, I think we've got some amazing matches on the line. And I'm uh, I'm hoping you can uh, smash some people. You know, I shouldn't be biased, but come on, I have to be. I'm European. Oh, my gosh. All right. Come on. Relax, dude. That's the thing. You don't even get a chance against our first team because almost everyone's already played together so much. You know? Yeah. Out. They have. They have. I mean, yeah, but. All of you win. Yeah, but you've got a bit of a weird comp going on, and the first EU team has no, got like pretty much radiance. And, uh, nah. They they all play junior. Literally every single one of them plays junior. Ice can go over to junior if they need it. He Cho has played. Ju I just found out that Kyo plays junior. I just found out that Kyo plays junior. Okay, Kyo doesn't play. Junior. Quote unquote, quote unquote, K bot. Twenty fifth of May, twenty twenty one. Kyo plays junior. No, that's not what I said. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean. A lot of interesting stuff. Of course, again, as a reminder, folks, these matches are going to take place this coming Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central European summertime. Uh, so please be sure to tune in. It'll be right here on this channel. You know, drop a follow and all that jazz. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more. Um, I think about the maps uh, yeah. and we don't necessarily have a graphic or something. I just want to kind of give a little bit of a preview where I could go into sure. very much detail here. You know, we dropped some hints in terms of what the players were picking over the course of the day. So if you want to go back, you know, if you're just joining us, go back and uh, see what map that Nylon picked that we flamed him for. Uh, you can do that. But, you know, in any event, um, the way it kind of works is, you know, it's going to be a best of nine set, very similar to how exactly Tassel is played. Uh, but this time around, I asked each individual player for their own map pick uh, in the order of, uh, you know, in an order based on voting. I won't go into a lot of details because it's a little difficult to describe, but um, there was, you know, some uh, mathematical process that went into the order of the maps that you'll see. And so, for example, uh, you know, Kiver's map pick is going to appear in the first uh, one because he was, or effectively because he's the one that got the most votes. That's not exactly how it's going to play out, but um, yeah, I mean, and then it'll kind of, it'll kind of alternate and go back and forth, but um, actually I didn't do any like intentional alternating. It just kind of shook out the way that it did. Um, and so, yeah, each player got to pick their own map. And so I said, you know, if you wanted to coordinate these things with your team, you can. And it sounds like, you know, in the conversations that we had, there were certainly uh, some conversations that happened in some of those lineups, but you know, otherwise each individual player was picking each of those maps. And so hopefully there's going to be something that they really get the chance to shine on, uh, especially if the set goes farther. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really interested. In that. I feel like, honestly, looking at these maps, most likely the teams huddled together and decided, you know, all right, I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna pick this, rather than, uh, you know, Power just put up his hand and said, I'm picking my favorite map. You know, uh, I think it was most likely a team thing and an order thing. Um, but I'm still, I mean, actually, I'd say that, but then I'd say Kyo probably did just put his hand in the air and say, I'm picking Tower Control, Muscle Forge Fitness. Uh, oh, <laughs> you know, so did, so did Biscuit. Um, yeah, it's yeah. like spot the FT win members and they both pick Tower Control Muscle Forge. Big yeah, shot. The, the two really big aggressive players on FT win decided to pick the really aggressive FT win map. Uh, so nobody saw that one coming. Um, so yeah, you know, hopefully we'll see a couple of more unique picks, right? There wasn't like a map pool. They could pick any map and mode combination mm -hmm. in the game. And one of the reasons they could do that is because, you know, that map list was set this past weekend. So they've got these players have the entire week. Uh, in order to kind of practice things, think through things out uh, and take care of business. Obviously, you know, I, I told them that this isn't necessarily like, you know, for all the marbles or anything, but uh, they certainly are going to want to show up with their best effort and their best foot forward. And so we'll have to see what kind of preparations and, you know, maybe we'll even try to drop a few retweets. Uh, we'll see if some of the players decide to stream some of their scrims even uh, potentially in these pickup rosters over the course of the week. That should be a, a lot of fun to kind of watch out for. But yeah, you know, that is... Uh, basically all we've got for the show today. Again, Saturday, uh, the 29th, uh, one day after Splatoon turns six-year-old. Matt, can you believe it? Splatoon is going to turn six years old this Friday. 
actually uh in the uk came out on the 29th so uh for me the six year it was for me the six year anniversary is on Tassel all okay. stars uh, well it's this but, coming weekend either way it's coming weekend yeah i didn't i didn't realize what's coming up this weekend normally i remember yeah. every year but yeah six years old that's uh six crazy. years I've, I've been we've been doing this for my six life. years yeah a third of my life has been consumed by splatoon that makes me pretty <laughs> yeah, okay, let's, let's end this before I start crying. That's All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> With that existential crisis down, folks, that is going to be it for the Tassel All Stars reveal show. Again, Saturday, be there. 1, 1 p.m. Eastern is going to be when the show starts with the third team battles uh, with that uh, Starburst Frontline versus Team UK. Uh, should be a fun one to start off with. Then, of course, working our way all the way up to uh, that star-studded first place roster but as i said that's going to do it we do hope that you enjoyed the show today let us know what you thought i'm probably going to scroll back through twitch chat but let us know on twitter uh what you all thought about this sort of a thing and we hope to see you back here on saturday for the matches themselves with all that out of the way folks i've been cave out i've been joined by nija thank you so much for joining us uh this afternoon and we will talk to you all saturday take care everyone have a good night